a thousand people can't get on the summit at the same time. You have to negotiate and, uh, and work with other team members. And it was just a difficult uh, year. Um, mm. Basically, it, it, every, everyone did what they wanted to do. There was a bit of um, argy-bargy. We think the Americans had uh, a, a weather warning which said there was a storm coming, but nobody really knew when. And so basically it was business as usual. Everybody uh, went up the mountain uh, 9th, 10th, 11th of May. Um, and of course, um, as aficionados of Everest will know, literally the worst storm in 100 years hit the mountain on the 10th of May. And mm. at that moment, I was climbing from Camp 3 to Camp 4, which is, uh, you know, the the last camp before your summit bid. And, of course, um, there was a number of teams, including Rob Halls and Scott Fisher's team, Americans who were um, – and Japanese team that were coming down from the summit um, in the worsening conditions uh, on that day, 10th of May. As I arrived at the South Coal at uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the evening – um, you know, the wind was was hor horrific, horrendous. There were loads of tents around me. I kind of I just assumed that everybody was was back safe down, which they should have been ordinarily um, in their tents. And you know, you don't really interact. You just you're exhausted. You climb into your tent. In fact, I had to erect a tent, and which took forty five minutes instead of three minutes because mm -hmm. of the uh, the difficult conditions. But we dived in eventually. Um, we had a few missing cl climbers from my team, uh, so my focus was was down the mountain, not up. And um, what transpired was that um, there were many, about 30 people still trying to get back to our location, which was probably why it was slightly quiet. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, uh, during the night, it was horrific um, conditions, and sadly... You know, eight people lost their lives during during that n next 24 hours. It was pretty grim.